Hey friends, welcome, welcome back to my channel and to another video. I'm super excited for today's video because I'm unboxing the very first piece off my 2024 jewelry wish list. It's from Big Rapel and I am so in love with it. I also have a little surprise for you, so definitely make sure to stick around for that as well. Because I had such a hard time finding a comprehensive video on this specific piece on YouTube, my goal with this video is to give anyone who's interested in this specific item all of the information that they're going to need to make an informed purchase. So if that's you, you'll want to keep watching. As I hinted in my 2024 jewelry wishlist video, I originally inquired about this item with my essay in about mid-December of 2023. It was something that I had wanted to purchase for my birthday in mid-March. And at that time in December, I was quoted a three to four month wait. So I decided to go ahead and order it with my SA right then and there because based on the estimated wait, it would be expected to arrive in mid-March at the earliest, so just in time for my birthday, mid-April at the latest. But it ended up coming in the first week of February, so over two months early. And I'm super impatient, you know, I could not wait for my birthday to open it. I was so over the moon excited when my essay texted me to say that it had arrived, that I went in to pick it up the next day and I walked out of the store with it. Anyway, before I say anything else, let's get into the unboxing and we can chat more about it afterwards. So no surprise here, this item is from Van Cleef & Arpel. My essay actually left VCA at the end of February, so I'm really happy my piece came in early because I got to see him before he left. He gave me this box of chocolates, which was really nice of him, because who doesn't love VCA goodies? Here's my invoice, and the care booklet, with the certificate of authenticity. I also got a couple of travel pouches. This one's for the current item. You might be able to tell what I got just by the shape of it. And this one's for the ring that I bought last year because I didn't get one at the time. It also looks like I can hold a pair of earrings or maybe a necklace. And here's the gift box with the good stuff in it. Let's go ahead and open that up. There's that beautiful suede gift box inside. So the first item of my 2024 jewelry wishlist is the Van Cleef & Arpel Sweet Alhambra Bracelet in Hammered Rose Gold. I am in love guys, this bracelet is so stunning. I also love how the link chain catches light because as you can see it gives off this really nice sparkle and shine throughout the chain. Of course, the main feature of the bracelet is the single clover motif that's iconic of the Alhambra collection. The motif itself features this really lovely hammered effect in the middle and a distinctive beaded contour around the edges. Overall, it's a beautifully crafted piece with a lot of detail and sparkle. <laughs> Guys, I love this piece so much and I'm so happy that I even came across it. Like, I didn't know that this existed a few months ago and the day after I found it online, I ordered it. Normally, I'm not so impulsive, but this was really actually only like a half impulse. So, quick backstory, because the only other item that I have from Van Cleef & Pell is this rolls of gold ring in a small model. And I knew that I wanted my second piece to be the Sweet Alhambra bracelet with the single clover motif. But the only Sweet Clover bracelet that I was aware of was the yellow gold Sweet Alhambra bracelet with the Mother of Pearl motif. And the reason that I didn't pull the trigger earlier on the version with the Mother of Pearl is because everyone says that it's such a sensitive stone and that there's a lot of variation in the stone itself. It's not that I don't take care of my jewelry because I do. Like I've said before, I don't typically wear my jewelry 24-7 or so none of it really has as much opportunity to get damaged as it would if I were someone who did wear my jewelry 24-7. But if I were like wearing it while washing my hands, which is something I do tons of times every day, I would worry that, you know, it might get wet, that damaging the stone or accidentally hitting it or scratching it against something. Not that I walk around like banging my wrist on things throughout the day, but I think that that happens more than we realize and I wouldn't want to come to that realization at the expense of my bracelet. Not to mention the variations in the stone itself. Some people say that their mother of pearl stones have 
you know, more of a pink undertone. Others say that it's more white throughout. Some have the tiny bumps or striations. And I know myself, if I ended up with a stone like that, it might bother me. Other people say like, oh no, it's charming, it's character. No, it would bother me. So <laughs> It's just easier to stay away from it at the end of the day. And because a lot of these items are almost never readily available at a local boutique, so I'd have to order it and then possibly wait for months at a time to come in before I can see it. And it would bother me even more if it came in and I didn't like it and then had to start the process all over again. Now, I don't know whether in the order notes your SA can specify your preferences in terms of the condition of given stone so that's definitely something that i can inquire about but yeah i was just hesitant overall to go for the sweet alhambra bracelet with the mother of pearl although i think it's beautiful a really really close friend of mine has it and she loves it and it is so pretty i've seen it in person a couple of times and it's really really lovely maybe one day i'll change my mind and go for it because it really is a beautiful piece but i was just nervous about the wear and tear and how the stone would arrive anyway i got sidetracked there so i didn't know that there was a solid gold version of the sweet alhambra single motif bracelet until last december like i said so immediately after i saw it online you know while casually browsing the website I contacted my SA to see if it was available in yellow gold because I do tend to prefer yellow gold in general and at that point I didn't have any rose gold fine jewelry pieces. He confirmed that these Sweet Alhambra bracelets do not come in solid yellow gold but I later found out that yellow gold versions of the single and six motif Sweet Clover bracelets were released as limited edition pieces in one of the Tokyo stores. So solid yellow gold versions of the Sweet Alhambra Clover bracelets do exist, but I probably wouldn't be able to get my hands on one unless it were pre-loved because I'm assuming that by this point they've all been sold. I do hope that one day the CA decides to make the yellow gold versions of the Sweet Alhambra bracelets, the solid yellow gold versions, part of their permanent collection, or even just releases them in Canada but there's really no way to tell if and when that will happen so with that in mind i had to decide whether i wanted to go for the rose gold obviously in the end i decided to go for it because here she is ultimately i decided to because the sweet alhambra clover bracelet was something that i wanted for a long time i just hadn't pulled the trigger earlier because the only version i was aware of was the yellow gold with the mother of pearl clover and like I said, I was hesitant about the stone, although it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Also, I am nowhere near the league of a BCA special order to have been able to order it in yellow gold. But I figured it would be a good opportunity to step out of my comfort zone a bit and a good piece to start my rose gold fine jewelry collection with, given that there are other pieces on my jewelry wish list that are only available in rose gold, like the Bag Hermes Chandon Pochene. So I ordered it shortly after through my essay, which was naturally preceded by intense research across YouTube, Facebook, the online forums. I don't know about you guys, but every time I order something or want to go buy something, I do a ton of research both before and and after especially if it's something that I have to wait for because then you know watching the videos and everything and the unboxings while waiting for that item to come in kind of feels like I'm getting to experience the item in the interim is that weird tell me I'm not alone in that I really struggle to come across good detailed videos about this specific bracelet. So I felt like I had to piece information from all of these different videos together. And as someone who hadn't seen this piece in person before or really what BCA rose gold looks like, I found that it was really hard with the content available to get a good idea of what this item would look like in real life like outside of product photos, even how the rose gold would compare to yellow gold. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, differences in lighting when people are filming or just in terms of footage qualities. So it's really hard to kind of focus this well and also get the color to come across accurately. So I'm hoping with this video that I can help fill the gaps for anyone interested in this specific piece. And for anyone just looking for more information on the single motif Sweet Alhambra bracelet in the hammered rose. 
right so enough of my blabbing let's get into the bracelet itself i just love it it is so Cute. So this single motif sweet old hamper bracelet is made from 18 karat solid rose gold. From end to end, it measures 18 centimeters long or approximately 7 inches. The motif itself is 9.5 millimeters or 0.37 inches from top to bottom. So it is tiny compared to the vintage size, which is 15 millimeters or 0.59 inches long. Just so you know, well, the hammered effect is on both sides of the clover, so for whatever reason your clover flips while you're wearing it, it won't look any different. As you can see, there are two toggles. Clasping on the inner toggle shortens it by about 1.75 centimeters or 0.6 nine inches my wrist is small so even on the shorter setting there's still a bit of room and it's not too tight and it does move up and down my wrist a bit and although i'd prefer for it to just sit still around here with a chain like this i really wouldn't want it to be super tight either because i feel like that could get uncomfortable so i really haven't thought about resizing it but if your wrist is even smaller and you think this would be much too roomy VCA does offer resizing services and fyi vca resizing is complimentary within the first 12 months after purchase so regarding pricing this piece retails at 2020 Canadian dollars plus tax. I'm in Ontario, so for me, it came up to $2,282.60. Again, that's in Canadian dollars. In the US, it retails for 1480 US dollars plus tax. I ordered the bracelet, I was able to put down a 30% deposit with my essay, which came up to $606, and then I paid the rest when the bracelet arrived and picked it up in boutique. But I've heard from certain creators, they're no longer able to do so in their cities or stores. So I think in some locations now, you're required to put up 100% deposit down on any of your orders, which has rightly ruffled some feathers, especially considering that the wait times for some of these pieces are insane. So just be aware that depending on where you're located or where you tend to shop, you may or may not have the option of putting down a 30% deposit on your orders. Is close to $2,300 for a bracelet expensive? Yes. 100%. Whether it's worth it comes down to the individual buyer. Personally, I love it. I plan to have it forever. So for me, yes, it's worth it, especially as someone who likes dainty, understated pieces. I also think it's a great piece if you love the Alhambra line. If you're ready for a vintage size piece just yet, but would still like a piece of the collection in the meantime. Or if you prefer the daintiness of the sweet size versus the statement of the vintage and magic size pieces. Another thing that I really like about it is that it is quite low maintenance. Unlike the Mother of Pearl version, for example, I don't have to worry about it like getting wet because it is solid gold. Also, it's not a very like flat piece, so you're not going to see a whole bunch of scratches on it. And FYI, you can take it into the store for cleaning. But I've heard most people say that with their solid gold VCA pieces, they just gently clean it with mild soap and warm water. So it's also really easy to care for as well, which I think makes it a great option for people who like to wear their fine jewelry 24-7. The rose gold itself is beautiful. It is quite pink in certain lighting, but it's not too pink in my opinion. I don't have any Cartier rose gold, but for those who do, from what I've seen, VCA rose gold is a bit more rosy than Cartier rose gold, which itself seems a bit more subtle. Some people though have said that over years of wear, their VCA rose gold pieces tend to look a bit more yellow. But mine is still new, so I haven't seen that yet, and I can't speak to that at all. But I can confirm that in certain lighting, I find that it looks a bit more coppery and sometimes a bit more yellow than rose or pink gold. So to give you a better idea of how VCA rose gold and yellow gold compare, here's my pearls of gold ring in yellow gold and the rose gold bracelet in natural light. It's actually so hard to capture the pink of the rose gold, so I've added more yellow gold rings to show the difference a bit better. I also wanted to add a real-life photographic comparison of the two gold tones. This is the best one I could find, and I think it's actually quite accurate. As you can see, they are very different tones of gold, but they don't necessarily clash. Another thing to consider is your skin tone. Rose gold is quite versatile and is known to suit both warm and cool skin tones. I think it all just comes down to personal preference. I personally really like the subtlety of the rose gold against my skin, but some people might want it to stand out more. If you really want a good idea of what the rose gold will look like on you, I would say try and visit a local boutique if you have access to one and try any of their rose gold pieces. It doesn't have to be the one that you want because they might not have it in stock but just try any of their rose gold pieces against your skin and see how you like it personally i was just too lazy to go into store so that's why i resorted to like my research versus you know making an appointment to go in also i don't know how often this item is available to pick up in store or order online my home store tends to get limited inventory so most things have to be ordered unless 
you know, you get lucky on the day that you visit. Personally, whenever I booked online for this bracelet, I've always seen the order by phone prom. So I imagine that it's currently only something that you can order through your essay or through your store or by calling into client services. But I'm not sure if that's true everywhere, so correct me if I'm wrong. Recently, I've heard that hammered pieces have been quoted some really crazy wait times, like up to one year in some cases. And I've also heard that they've stopped taking orders entirely for certain pieces until the backlog is cleared. But yeah, for this, depending on where you are, you may have to wait three or four months or longer. Considering all of that, the four months quoted for me I thought it was pretty decent and it came in two which ended up not being so bad after all so maybe the wait times that they quote are sometimes to account for unexpected delays because remember there's only one workshop that's servicing all bca orders from around the world so i'm sure it gets really really hard to keep up with demand so if you're interested in buying this piece for an event or a milestone or a celebration start looking in your local boutique or order by phone or through your essay a few months in advance so that it arrives in time also side note i'm super grateful that i was able to get the travel pouches for both of my pieces i know some people have said that they've had a hard time getting travel pouches and stuff from their boutiques or from their essays especially since VCA announced that they would no longer be making those items now i believe that any pouches we do get are like leftover inventory so if any of you need pouches it wouldn't hurt to ask your essay or your store and i would say to do so sooner rather than later before inventory runs out if you can't tell i love 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 this bracelet i'm so glad that i went for the rose gold after all and i'm really looking forward to adding the six motif version next I think this bracelet is so beautiful, it's so dainty and understated, but it still has some sparkle and detail, and it has that iconic clover that we all know and love VCA for. I just love it, and I really couldn't recommend it more. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful and informative, and that it's answered all of the questions you have about this specific piece. But if I've missed anything, or you need any more information, please let me know in the comments below, and I'll address it as best as I can. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around. Before I go, though, I have a little announcement for you all. I mentioned in my notes a couple weeks ago, but for those of you who didn't see that, I want to let you know that I'm going to be doing a small Hermes giveaway around my birthday as kind of a thank you for just being here, listening to me babble, and being so supportive, and to kind of share in the birthday vibe. I already kind of know the items that I want to pick up, so I'm hoping that they're all in stock, but just in case I have to tweak my plans a bit, I won't share what they are until I have them in hand and I'm able to unbox them for you. And everything that I unbox for myself is exactly what you're going to get as the giveaway goes. Then is to release that video on or around my birthday. And in that video, I'll also share the giveaway rules and how to enter. Definitely stay tuned for that and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. So that's the first piece off my 2024 jewelry wishlist, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching and that this video was helpful for those of you who are interested in buying the same piece. I'd definitely love to hear your thoughts on it too, so let me know in the comments. And if you're looking for more videos on Van Cleef and Rappel items, make sure to check out Reshmi underscore beauty around the world. She has some amazing VCA and Cartier pieces, actually. I watch a lot of her videos after ordering my Sweet Old Hamber bracelet, not only because she also has the six motif in rose gold, but also because she's just very knowledgeable about Van Cleef and their pieces in general. She also has a lot of comparison videos, so you might find those interesting and useful as well. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the unboxing, guys. As always, I've put links to all the items I've mentioned in the description in case you're interested in checking them out. Anyway, I'll be back with another video next week. In the meantime, though, please come join me over on Instagram where I share curated photos and videos. But that's it for today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!